Bow. What's up guys, it's Freddy. Okay, I'm just going to throw a quick video out today that I'm actually going to record in about an hour or so. But right now, what I'm going to do is read my ultimate empowerment belief stack from Impact Theory. The reason that I do this every day is because it just gets my mind like thinking about the right things and moving in the right direction. And if you repeat them every single day, they will start to really like ingrain in your mind. And when something comes up that it kind of goes against one of your core beliefs now, you will be able to repeat it in your head to yourself and instantly self-soothe and be like, you know, that is not a direction that I go in. That is not something that I do. So you can course correct and, and go back to being, you know, the self that you want to be or maintain every day. Okay, so why am I doing this? So that you guys can kind of get some value from the beliefs that I repeat every day that are helpful for me, which literally just came from Impact Theory's website. And because I do think, like I said, since they help me think, they'll help you guys think in a positive direction. So these beliefs are in fact true to me. I've chosen to believe them. Beliefs are in fact choices. And these are empowering to me. There's also some others. I think I have like a total of 40, but these are about 25 of them straight from Impact Theory. Here we go. Number one. Human potential is nearly limitless. Human potential is nearly limitless, meaning where we are today and where our limit is, is so fucking far that you're better off just focusing on yourself today, getting better, and knowing that you can get better basically forever, okay? And I'm gonna keep these short, concise, and fast, guys, because I don't wanna be here for all day recording this. Okay, so here we go. Oh shit, my cat's outside, give me a second. And bang, I'm back. So anyways, guys, yeah. The second of the beliefs, personal growth should be your highest priority. So if personal growth is not your highest priority, it should be. Even if you're in a relationship, both of you should be prioritizing personal growth so that you can focus on getting better at you know, your relationships, your skills, your happiness, your fulfillment, and all those things, and then come together to build a stronger relationship. Um, neither of you should be focusing and pouring all your energy into the other person without giving yourself any because then you're an empty cup trying to give. And so you'll get very poorly. So personal growth should be your highest priority. Number three, you can acquire new skills at any time in any area. This is a belief that means that with time and effort, you will get better at any single thing. And so if you want to become any single person, the difference between where you are today and who that person is who's able to do those things is a difference of skills and those skills are going to take skill and knowledge acquisition from you with time and practice. So your effort over time and you being able to obtain those skills means you can at any time get better in any area because of neuroplasticity, because your neurons strengthen when you're trying and learning, because you can make mistakes, learn from them and then do better and continue to do that if you have the intention to learn. It's the difference between, you know, a, a Olympic athlete or a runner who's been running for 10 years with deliberate practice, looking at his footwork and looking at his um, stride and looking at what he eats before and looking at what, what he eats the three days before his race and um, his pace and all these things, right? And so it's the difference between that person and somebody who says, I've been running for 10 years too and I've never gotten better at running. And then you ask them, well, you know, you ask them, how fast is your... 5k how you know 3.5 miles how fast is your half marathon how fast is your marathon and they have no idea and you ask them well do you know your stride or your pace and and what do you do to prepare for your races and prepare for your you know to go out in the mornings and are you focusing on where your feet are landing and how they're landing while you're running and then you have this person that's just completely unaware of what it takes to get better at something which is deliberate practice with the intention to get better and whatever that looks like. You need to gain the skills of that person who does it at a high level if you ever wanna get there. All right, number four. It requires discipline, practice, and focus to acquire new skills. And so that is kind of tying into what I just went over where I, you need to have the intention to get better or you'll never get better. You need to have the belief you'll get better, but you need to have the intention to go to practice that thing and actually learn to get better. And that means not priding yourself on being right, but priding yourself on being the learner. Not having your self-esteem around being someone who's never wrong, but having yourself built around someone who gets wrong a lot, but learns really fast and wants to correct. Okay, number five. You can do anything you set your mind to without limitation. Number six. Number five is a lie, but it's an empowering lie. We do that which empowers us. 
So the reason that he says that is because without limitation is not necessarily true. It's a lie because beyond physics, you know, if you want to sprout wings from your back, you can't really do it. And so beyond the realm of physics, what we can actually do or want with our mind or attain is actually limited. But there's no reason to believe it's limited because what is your limit? How are you meant to know that? So you're better off, again, believing that you have no limit, thinking that anything that you want, maybe you want to sprout wings and maybe that just so happens to be your big dream. And so you work your whole life to do that thing and you never even get it. But who's to say you weren't going to, you know? And so that is why you should believe empowering lies and repeat and trick your mind even. You have no, there is no rule saying you can't trick your mind into believing that you have no limits. So that's why you're always improving. Because people trick their mind all the time. People trick their mind into thinking they have symptoms. People trick their mind into thinking they're someone they're not. People trick their mind with excuses and all sorts of things that they're not capable of something. That they have some type of wall around them that no one else has, but they have it. So people trick themselves all the time. So there's no rule saying you can't trick yourself to do empowering things as well. Okay? Just do it intentionally. Number seven. It does not matter who you are today. It only matters who you wish to become and the price you're willing to pay to get there. Meaning, your identity is fluid. You aren't who you are today is not who you have to be. Even if you are at the lowest low point in your life and you're doing the worst things you've ever done in your life, you can be better. Tomorrow when you wake up, you can decide to be better. In the next day, since you chose that little small habit to take on every day, you get a little better. And the next day, and the next day, you get a little better. And then over the weeks and the months, you start becoming someone who's good. And so you, you see what I'm saying? There, it does not matter who you are today, what your actions have been over the last few weeks, what your actions are planned to be for the next week. Your plans don't exist. None of that stuff exists. It's all fluid. You can change that. Your identity is changeable, malleable, but people mistake it as objective truth when they say, no, I'm a Christian. Try to change me and I'll fuck you up. It's like, no, you believe you're a Christian. You can believe other things too. You might want to open your mind and, and read in some other texts as well and then come to a conclusion for yourself. And that wasn't given to you by your parents. Okay, guys, next. And I'm going to try to speed this up. So number eight is you must have a very clear vision of who you want to become. Very clear. I mean, everything you can know about yourself in the future of what you want to become the skills you want to acquire, the people you want to have around you, what your body wants to look like, what your money needs to look like, all those things need to be something you're moving towards, not just a, some type of vague idea. When someone asks you, what is success? What is your successful? And you sit there like, um, hmm, like, no, that's not going to work because you're not moving towards your success. Okay. Number nine, in life, you must be willing to make mistakes. Be willing to mess up. It is the only way to get better. Pride yourself on being the learner so that all you want to do is make mistakes so that when you leave the room, you increase your skill 3000x because you, you know, solve 30 problems that are going to compound on each other and be really good in your future because you took all these lessons from everybody in that room versus the guy who walks in, knows a few things, doesn't raise his hand for anything unless he knows it, learns nothing and leaves the room the same day. And so like, you should always be willing to make mistakes. You have to, um, if you hope that you weren't going to make mistakes, I got bad news for you. You're not going to get good at anything and you're not going to persevere. So please be able to make mistakes, have persistence, have faith and self-belief in yourself and in your plan, but have the desire to be going somewhere. Have a vision. This is from think and grow rich now, right? Have desire, have faith in the plan and in yourself, and then you'll have persistence to push through. And so, that is kind of what you want to go for. Desire is also known as a vision. So next one, number 10. Mistakes are the greatest teacher you'll ever know if you're willing to admit that you've made one. So if you're not willing to admit that you've made a mistake, you'll never actually learn because you're not allowed to learn if you tell yourself, no, I didn't do that wrong. The world, everything else is wrong. I'm right. And I don't know why this keeps going wrong. You know, and um, from the outside looking in, everyone's like, you're making a mistake every single time you're making the same mistake. But, you know, you keep cl claiming that you're not making mistakes. So you never sit down to actually edit your behavior, your thought patterns to change how you act in that situation. So you keep messing up forever, eternally damned, if you will. So the other 
alternative to that is knowing that you've made mistakes, willing to admit that you've made one. And then now knowing that since you're the learner and getting better is what you pride yourself on, you literally feel good by telling people you've made mistakes and thank you for correcting me. I appreciate you so much. Okay, so there's a big shift in mindset there. I'm just sharing this for you guys, by the way. <laughs> Number 11, there's power in sharing the lessons you've learned from your mistakes. So there's a theory I have around productizing yourself, productizing yourself, solving problems for you in your life with whatever skills needed to solve that problem. And then showing others how you solve that problem because others also have the same problems as you. And so that is productizing yourself essentially. And it stems from the fact that since you are a human and we're all living the same human neurological experience. And if you learn things that help you do that better, you can teach people how to do that because other people are going to want to get there also. And so that is any, any single thing, whatever brings you pleasure or solves you pain and you do for yourself, teach others how to do that thing on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter, and then call it your brand. Um, okay, next. And actually, before I go on to the next one, in the lessons learned from your mistakes. So the lessons learned from your mess ups, those ones are the reason that is so vital to people. The reason that this is so easy to give lessons on is because other people are going to mess up and other people don't like messing up. So if you can save them from pain and the time waste of making a mistake, the bigger, the better, right? You will make a lot of money. Number 12, failure is temporary. Move quickly beyond it. So I have a theory around failing, which is that if you mess up and you have the intention to get better and then you do get better, you won anyways. So failure is only when you fail and decide that you don't want to learn from that thing. Now you've failed. And essentially over time, if you keep doing that, you'll be a failure. And if over time you keep doing the other way, you'll be a successful person, a winner. And so you want to be able to make mistakes fast, learn from them even faster, admit that you've made them all the time, fully take account accountability and extreme ownership of all the things you did always start with it is my fault how is it my fault because i contributed to this situation at hand somehow i'm here and so in the way and to the extent that i did that how can i change to be better next time or better right now so failure is temporary move quickly beyond it it's it's because you either win or you learn and get better, which is a win, or you actually stop out and make mistakes and call it a day and you quit and you go home every single time. And that person is never gonna go anywhere. That's on them. Next, excuses are bullshit, don't make them ever. Number 15, any obstacle can be overcome with the right solution and every problem has a solution. See number 14, which is excuses are bullshit, don't make them ever. Okay. And this is the thing about excuses. I'll, I'll give you a quick sinister truth about excuses. They are real. They are real. They're literally real. Excuses like you growing up harder than other people or you being in situations that other people don't have to deal with and um, you, know, you being tired, they're real. They're actually true. But if you rely on them, they will crush your dreams and ruin you. Excuses are bullshit. Don't make them, okay, for yourself. Building your self-esteem around being right all the time will lead to poor decision-making because you're not right all the time. So if a situation arises whereby you are not right, you'll just go dormant. You'll just be quiet. You'll just not try. You'll just not show that you're wrong because you want to be right. So that's the problem. Number 17. Okay. And this is the one that goes together. Build your self-esteem around identifying the right answer and pursuing it faster than anyone else. Learning the fastest, being the one that raises their hand first in the room that asks the first question in the room. That's wrong first in the room, so you're the first one to learn. That's what makes you happy. And if you're not the first, the second. If you're not the second, the third, the fourth. It, it does not matter. You're the learner. We're here to learn. You go on stage to speak for the first time ever. Instead of you know, feeling all this anxiety, you now perceive the nerves as, okay, this is the first time I'm doing something. I'm the learner and I'm here to try. And you know, if I mess up, which I probably will, um, I hope that everyone tells me after and that I can see it on video and get better. Okay. Versus being the person who comes up to the stage to do this public speaking for the first time and is perceiving massive maddening anxiety because you want to be the perfect presentation giver, but you know, you're not going to be that good somewhere deep down, but you want to be. So let's just go out here and try to be. And then when you go try to be the perfect Ed Milet, Tony Robbins level speaker, you just crumble. 
And so you don't want to do that. You want to be someone who's here to learn all the time in every room. It'll take away the need for validation by wanting to be the learner instead of the person who's right. Okay, next. Number 18, have very clear goals. And the reason for that is you want to be moving towards something. Um, and the only way to be doing that is to know where you're going. Otherwise, you might be sometimes, you might not be the other times. And if we're going to rely on luck and instead of, you know, heightening our odds, then it's going to be a lot harder to get ahead in life. Okay, so the next ones are 19 and 20. Do that, you should do that, excuse me, which moves you toward your goals. And you should not do that, which moves you away from your goals. How are you able to know and identify those things if you not have goals? And whether or not you're doing them on a daily or hourly basis even, um, because for me, I have timers every single hour. And at the top of every hour, I get a, a timer to go off. And it says to me, it, right in my head, it throws three quick questions. It says, am I moving closer to my goals? How can I do better in this next hour? How can I start right now? So that's the three questions. Every top of every hour, 12, one, two, three. Am I moving closer to my goals? Yes. Four, am I moving closer to my goals? Yes. So that is literally a way that you can program, you know, your mind almost to always be wanting to take actions that moves you toward and not further away. And if you are moving further away, it's okay. Course correct this next hour is no problem, you know? Okay, guys, we're almost there. So the last five, I'm going to spin them out quick and then we'll go through them a little bit. 21, build your life in a way that maximizes your fulfillment. 22, success demands passion. Passion beats talent over time, okay? Number 23 is be a linchpin in your own life. A linchpin, read the book Linchpin by Seth Godin. A linchpin is somebody who is so good at what they do and loves what they do so much, who has so much passion for the work they do for this world, for others, for themselves, that they are an artist in their own way. They are an artist in their way of work. They have special, specific knowledge in that field in that subject matter, in that space that others don't have, and you can't be trained to have. And they love it so much that they are a linchpin in their chosen occupation, in their chosen way of serving others. Number 24, motivate and inspire those around you. Energy transfers. You want to be someone who transfers a lot of energy. If you want to know two people that transfer a lot of energy that I really enjoy watching, Brendan Burchard, Ed Milet. Watch those two guys speak on stage. Watch how they transfer energy to the crowd that's watching them. Watch how they get them. They say, do you agree with me? Say yes. Yes. Boom, 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 boom. And they're going down this list and they're getting everyone like pumped up. Or Tony Robbins, when he comes out on stage and he's jumping, he's jumping. And you know what I'm saying? It's like people transfer energy to others. So you want to be someone who motivates and inspires others around you. That people want to come to you. When they leave, they're feeling good. Because if people come to you and they leave and they're not feeling good, that is what people remember. Thoughts are the feeling of the brain and emotions are the feeling of the body. People remember thoughts back to when you didn't make them feel good before they ever see you again. And then they're immediately their body is transported back into the past. And that is the emotions that were attached to whatever you made them feel is what they feel in their body. If those are good emotions, they will now want to gravitate back towards you. If they're poor emotions, they will not want to. And so you want to motivate and inspire those around you. Let me also go through quickly, build your life in a way that maximizes your fulfillment. What does that mean to me? It means that you should focus on passion and mastery, passion and mastery. So getting better and mastering the skills that you do in your passion and your passion happens to be a culmination of skills and knowledge and things you've done over time that you can better and better over time, serve yourself, your God and others better. And the reason you want to serve others is because neurology tells you that serving others gives you the same type of fulfillment feeling in your head that you get from making progress and making progress vice versa. And those are the feelings you want to give to yourself to feel happy or to, or as Tom says, feel good about yourself when you're by yourself. That is what you're trying to do. That is the game of neurology. We are a brain in a vat. All these sensory feelings don't actually exist to our brain. It's in a dark space in our head. So yeah, guys, build your life in a way that maximizes your game of neurology. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I was going to put this into the other video that I shoot for the day, but I won't do that now because it's gotten too long. But I will just upload it because, quite frankly, I like being able to hear myself repeat these beliefs anyways. Thank you much for watching, my friends. I'll see you soon. Bye.